There is so much getting thrown at us, right? Inflation and crypto and NFTs and you got to be in small cap or mega cap or you got to be in, you know, momentum. No, you got to be in low volatility. And the great thing about price charts is they answer those questions on where to be and where to have your money. And what I want to do this week is just kind of do a tour of the market and just kind of think out loud with you as I go through these price charts to show you, has China bottomed? Is the US still the best place to be? Is crypto still working? Is Tesla still beating GM this year? Questions that, that was something I proposed at the beginning of the year that GM would actually outperform Tesla this year. So stick around, we're gonna look at those and a lot more. Hey everyone, this is RC Peck with Fearless Wealth and this is my weekly update. This is my video where I view and tour the market using price charts and really seeing what's working and what's not working. Because here's the thing, we get hit with so much information and it's never gonna end. And one thing that is just so amazing about price charts is they literally say to you where to have your money. Now look, knowing where to put your money is not actually the full answer. You actually have to know how to do it, what strategies, what works, what doesn't work. But let's look at some symbols this week. And even if you're not going to move your money or you're ready to move all your money or you have 27 precious metal mining shares, you're going to get a lot out of this video because it's going to really start to show you how to think stronger and clearer and more powerfully about how to manage your money. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go over to the price charts and let's do this. Let's just look at some relative price charts first. So this is the S&P 500, and I just want to divide it by the international stock market. So what we're actually looking at here, and this is kind of interesting, the first chart I showed you, which was this chart, look back at that, that's the S&P 500, and that's priced in US dollars. This one is not priced in US dollars. This one's actually priced in international stock market units. I know it's not a thing, but go with me that this price chart is in a different currency. It's almost like I change it from dollars to euros or yuan, but instead of changing it to euros or yuan, I change it to the international stock market. And if the line is going up like any other price chart, that means what you are looking at, we're looking at the S&P 500 here, is gaining in strength. So what you're seeing here is the S&P 500 is still the place to be. Um, relative to, first of all, it's still the place to be because it's going up in absolute terms, but it's also outperforming the international stock market. And in fact, it's accelerating against the international stock market. You can see that the US stock market and the international stock market kind of went sideways with each other. They kind of arm wrestling who was going to make it and be stronger and come out of this stronger. And the answer is the US came out of this stronger. And part of the reason is the disruptors that are disrupting the world, they come from basically, not even one, one country because there's 50 states in the United States. They come from two states, right? They come from Washington state and they come from California. Those two states basically are disrupting the planet. Of course, not all the disruptors are in those two states, but if you add those two states together, you get about 40 million people in population and if you just think about just from that 40 million person, call it a country, um, they're crushing the world. So a lot of what you see on this price chart is because of Washington state and the state of California. So the US is still outperforming international. Now let's say international, here's the international stock market right here. Let's price international in emerging markets. So they look pretty evenly, right? So if this line is going higher, which it's kind of, broken above resistance, that means international is outperforming emerging market, but just barely, just barely. So what it's saying to you really is international is really not working, emerging markets not really working. And if you want, I can just take the S&P and divide it by emerging markets. And it looks just really similar to when I priced the S&P in international units, and now I'm just pricing the S&P in uh, emerging market units. I hope this makes sense to you because sometimes relative price charts can be 
a little confusing. Okay, let's do something fun here and let's just look at some things year to date. So here is GM year to date. So GM's up about 50% year to date, started down here, it started down here. And it's up about 50% for the year. Now here's the thing, it was up about 50% for the year in June of this year, five months ago, and it did a very nice and respectable 25% correction and it's right back up there. Now, I said at the beginning of the year that GM would outperform Tesla. And that was true <laughs> until about October 11th of this year. So Tesla between there and right there, you basically, let's just see what that is. From there to there, that is a whopping 26%. And then I believe this was the Hertz announcement. And then Tesla has just skyrocketed higher. It's up 60% for the year. So I'm wrong on that one. GM is up about 50% and Tesla's up about 60%. Um, I thought that was fun. The other thing I wanted to show you, I mean, I have a couple other things I want to show you, but this is, this is Planet Fitness. So this is in-person working out. So you go to a gym and you work out in person. And not necessarily how much it's up. We can see how much it's up. It's up 15%. So it's underperformed the market. But I thought what was interesting was here is work at home. So this is Peloton and this is the work at home or workout at home price chart. And it absolutely is getting crushed. It's down about 60% for the year. So that makes Planet, I always want to say Planet Hollywood, that makes Planet Fitness being up 15% look like a real winner here when it comes to exercising. Um, I don't know if where Peloton's going to be in a year, um, if the you know bloom has come off the flower, but man, it's hitting some pretty hard strides right now. The other thing I wanted to talk about was China. So this... Oh, I don't want to use this price chart here. Let's just go to three and a half years. Um, well, actually, you know what? We're on year to date. So here's the Chinese stock market year to date. And the Chinese stock market year to date is about, up about, drum roll, 2.3%. So pretty disappointing. 2.3%. That country is absolutely getting crushed. Um, if we look at a tracking symbol, you have China. So this is FXI. Now it's priced in the US dollars and the US dollar is going higher. So that's, that's really hurting it. But China itself, as measured by FXI, is actually down 12.5%. So part of that can be due to the value of the dollar. It may be bottoming, maybe. The key thing here, um, if you buy China via FXI, is that it's gotta break above this and stay above this. Now, you can go buy a 3X. So this is 3X China right here, yin. So it doesn't look that much different from FXI, but so this is literally a 3X bull uh, or 3X leveraged ETF on China. Now, here's a little fun trick. You can take a 3X and divide it by 1X, which is FXI. So now what I'm actually looking at, stick with me here, stick with me here, everyone. You're looking at a 3X leveraged China ETF being divided by a, let's just call it um, a 0X leverage, a, a normal uh, symbol for China. And you can see it's still trending down. It is still trending down. So using a leveraged fund being divided by a non-leveraged but same like country fund or same type of fund, you can really see if the momentum has changed. Now, you still you know, want to break above there, but you can notice how the price is much farther down. And so, you know, China may be bottoming, right? If we go to, let me go to a three-year. Here's three-year right here. It may be bottoming, right? Because here's the last place a 3X leveraged priced in a China unleveraged ETF bottomed. And it's right back down there again. So there could be a case of it bottoming, but the best I could say is that it's bottoming um, and really until it breaks above, call it $42.50. I really don't think we can say it bottomed. 
Uh, so there is that. I wanted to quickly show you um, a lot of people have been asking about Ethereum. And here's Ethereum right here. This is a three and a half year time range price chart. And there is right here, there's its old lifetime high there. And I just pulled the blue line down below where it attempted to get above its old or its current lifetime high back in September. So the blue line is between its old lifetime high and that little peak there in September. And all that's happening right now is there's just some, some supply coming in of people supplying their coins. I know they're coins and not shares, but they're supplying their shares of Ethereum. Um, and that's why what we're having here, it did, it did break out to a new lifetime high. It's right back down to where people sold it before. So now we wanna see if people are gonna buy it here and move higher. And I, I think the bet is that it is going to move higher. Uh, in my trading class this week, we looked at two other uh, crypto coins that I wanna share with you. But before I do, let's just quickly look at BTC. Um, and Bitcoin's doing a very similar thing. If you look at the screen, if you're watching this on video, if you look at the screen, you can see that Bitcoin really has a hard time staying above about $58,000. And it's right at about the $58,000 mark. And so if you're bullish on Bitcoin, this is where you want to kind of see it start to turn around. How you own the symbol, how you own the coin, how you own the project, how you own the ETF, right? How you own your investment is your investment. It's not necessarily the symbol. And what I mean by that is, are you going to do a buy and hold on Bitcoin? Are you going to put X percent in Bitcoin and rebalance it every year? Are you gonna trade it with fast moving averages? Those are all different strategies. Okay, so two interesting coins that we saw this week in my trading course because I, um, I'm teaching my trading clients to trade crypto because that's where all the energy is. Um, so this is Algorand. I may or may not be pronouncing it right. The symbol is A-L-G-O, A-L-G-O. What I like about it is it's, settling and sitting and digesting above its lifetime high. And I like that, right? It's okay to have digestion. It's okay to have sidewaysness above lifetime high. And that's what we're seeing here. And it's looking great. Now, if you compare this with uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're kind of just below their lifetime high where Algo, I'm going to call it Algo, is above it. And one other symbol that I thought was really interesting this week was Luna. This is Terra Luna. Uh, it looks great. There, there, there is its old lifetime high, right? Where it got to its, it got to a new lifetime high in, let's call it March of this year. Absolutely cratered down 80%, <laughs> 80, um, and then moved higher. You can see people came in and bought it when it came back down to its old high there. But what I like about this is it's now at new highs and it's just moving. It's just moving up and to the right and that's what we wanna see. So that's Luna, L-U-N-A, um, and that's Terra. Um, Luna is its symbol, Terra is its name. So we definitely have some crypto moving. At the beginning of the video I talked about, let me go to um, just get a better view. So I talked about kind of learning what's moving, what's not moving, where the strength is, where the strength isn't. Um, and so look, the US is still the place to be. Absolutely, the US is still the place to be. And it's been the place to be for 12 years. There's been periods in there where other things have been outperforming. Emerging markets had a period, international had a period, China even had a period of, of outperforming. But generally speaking, over the last 12 years, the U.S. has absolutely been crushing it, and it is still crushing it. The place to be in the world today, though, is really in the crypto market. That's where money is continuing to flow into. Corrections are getting shorter. I was going to say slower. They're getting shorter. And people are, the money that, when corrections happen in crypto, money is flowing in. That's what a lot of the exchanges are talking about, how they're like, man, when we have a down day, in, in the crypto world, we have all these people sending in more money. So that's a sign of strength when the market is buying on weakness. Uh, and so that's what we have going on. Now, what, who's gonna win this year? GM, Tesla, I'm not sure. Um, look, one's up 50%, one's up 60%. They're both winners this year. Um, let me know where I get it right, where I got it wrong. Let me know what you want me to cover. I appreciate you guys being in my world. And if you like this, 
you will love my other weekly videos. Even if you go back and look at past weekly videos from a month or a year ago, obviously they're timely, you're still gonna be learning how to think with your eyes, how to look for the signals, right? That's number two, look for the signals. And number three is understanding where strength is so you can always be buying strength and fading or selling weakness. Thanks everyone for being in my world and I will see you on the next video. Bye.